Hey everybody, sit down around the hearth, grab a frosty mug of ale. Welcome to the Lion's Pride Tavern, where we discuss all things Azeroth. Hey everybody, welcome to the Lion's Pride Tavern podcast. Tonight we talk about our raid this last weekend. One step forward, two steps back. Plus, an awesome fan joins the ranks. But before all that, let's start off with introductions. I'm your host, Fafford. I play a Dwarven Beastmaster Hunter in the awesome game World of Warcraft. Next up, we have Joe Bowie. Hi, I'm Joe Bowie. I play a Worgen Fire Mage. And Lorelei. Good evening. It's Lorelai, your Night Elf Fury Warrior. Up north is Epistle. Epistle, a protection pally tank. And Tappuccino. Hi, it's Tappuccino, your Night Elf Restoration Druid. Amazing. We got through introductions. Yay! Hey. Woohoo! <laughs> I don't know what it is about today. Yes. <laughs> Ding! Level 110. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, let's just start off with how we did in our raid. Joe Bowie? Well, on our first night out, uh, it was a pretty typical week. Uh, we blasted through our first six bosses uh, that we normally do, uh, finishing up with uh, Croesus. And uh, it was uh, a pretty, pretty even handed average night. Uh, everybody did a great job. Uh, you know, the fights went really smoothly, even the ones we accidentally pulled a little bit early. Uh, you know, but it went very well. Our second night? Well, let's just say we wiped so much that my butt was chafed. So, Ouch! <laughs> yeah, it was rough. Uh, we did we did take out High Botanist, but we went on to Tychondrius, and boy, that just, that was a bit of a mess. Um, you know, there was... There was a lot of uh, I don't I don't know exactly what entirely what the problem was uh, whether it was composition whether we had too much melee not enough ranged if if it was just uh, people having trouble with the mechanics that night or just I don't know uh, but we we didn't even really get close I would say I mean it was like 15 percent less there left on the boss pretty much every fight or or worse than that. Um, we uh, we definitely need to tighten up that fight quite a bit because we've done it before. Uh, we've even done it with, uh, you know, like on our first poll, I think, or second poll um, on on that fight. Uh, and I think we we'll be able to do it again, but we just we got to fix some things going into that fight. Well, let's let's start off with the first question. So, in in your opinion, what do you think went wrong, Lorelai? On the Tychondrius fight, I think it was purely mechanics. Uh, people still have got to start doing those correctly because that fight is completely unforgiving. If you don't do them, you will wipe. We still had people not moving the inf uh, with the infection and staying on that side. They were staying too long um, on the healthy side, and you just have to stop doing whatever you're doing and move because eventually you're going to get hit with a swarm and if you take that to the healthy side then you create problems with the ads in the back where you're having infected people running back there to try to help but they're just dragging that infection everywhere they go so i'm going to ask some individual questions because of the classes that we have so lorelei you uh you're a melee dps do you think Lord, uh, uh, Joe Bowie's right that we had a little too much melee? Probably could, probably did rather, because usually ranged can take care of everything in the back. And I know that I was running to the back a lot to try to take out the, especially when the big ads came out. And my problem was trying to get to a pillar when I needed it and then realizing oh, there's people over there that are getting hit with Swarm. Now I've got it. Now I've got to be careful where I'm going. So I was trying to think of a whole lot of things at one time and then not being able to get to a pillar. So I died a couple of times doing that. Okay. 
and uh, Epistle, I know that uh, you and Durag had your own kind of private conversation there for a while, trying to figure out, and even Durag admitted that it was an off night for him. Do you think that was a factor, or do you think it was something else? Uh, I think it was a factor among many factors. So uh, I kept watching to see if there's something consistent going wrong. I, I think everybody does this, right? You know, analyzes fights to try to figure out what was what was going on. Except in the case of armchair quarterbacks, you're not participating. In this case, we were all participating. Um, so yeah, he, he was thrown off a couple times. That might have had some consequence, but I, I just watched consistently. Um, the only consistency, I suppose, was the randomness of... Uh, the fight starts, we get a minute in and Lorelai dies. And what happened there? You know, where did that come from? Um, cause you know, she knows the mechanics uh, and then a little ways along, uh, somebody else dies and somebody else dies. And it's, it just was, um, almost like there was a, the country's had an I win button that he just kept pushing against individual people and they were gone. <laughs> yeah. And I was wondering because I didn't get a chance to ask. How was it for the healers? Because I know I was I was having some problems even at the front trying to find the pillars because we had a problem with the pillars still going everywhere, especially they would go more to the healthy side and then the infected people are running over there and then the swarm is hitting and uh, that was hard sometimes. When I was on the infected side, I didn't have a pillar to hide behind. But I was wondering for the healers, how was it tap? Because I was I was bandaging, I was taking potions every time we had pillars come up, and I wasn't sure if that was because healers were dying or if it, they just we didn't have enough healers or what was going on with that because there was just so much damage going out. It was weird. Well, we did have a really full group. I think that's probably our biggest Saturday night raid we've had. You know, with all of those people, then we have all, you know, all those opportunities to do something wrong, you know, so it was a little tough with the, you know, with the healing. I think we had the same amount of healers we usually do, and um, it was, it was just tough because, like I said, the mechanics have to be really, really driven, you know, and when you have so many people and then you've got people that aren't following mechanics, it just makes it hard for everybody. So we, well, well, we do have the... to straighten it out. But further than that, Tap, what I'm wondering, because I, I wasn't, I didn't have an eye on it in the same way that you would have, was it that people just like disappeared? Because it, it was, it seemed to me that I look and somebody wasn't going down, they were just gone. I don't know what you mean by that. Like As in they, their like health they, went to zero really fast. Oh, so it wasn't yeah, like they yeah, were yeah. down, down, down and gone. It was like all of a sudden, poof, they were not in the raid. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. There on was, the floor. Of, yep. On the floor, one shotted. Because I think I, I made some comments like, oh my God, how did that happen? You know, yeah, I, I just think, got one shotted. What's going on? I think in part what that, you know, and this is a little bit speculation because I didn't see the exact causes and people didn't specifically say exactly what it was. But I think that might have been in part because of people's positioning for where they were standing when they got infected and then the swarm comes out. And they would, uh, you know, the range is out there and because uh, it was mostly melee that were getting one shotted like that. And I think they I were just wondering. and I yeah, think they were just be. standing directly in line of like three or four people that are in the back and they're getting hit with multiple uh, hits of that of that carrying swarm. And, it, you know, it's just too much to take. I mean, you can take the one hit, you know, but taking four or five. Well. I don't know if that's going to be very good for your character. So, you know, I think that may have been playing into it a little bit is the positioning of the melee in respect to where the position of the the ranged were at, which was a problem we weren't really having in previous attempts on that fight, uh, even yeah. when we were first trying it. And, and truthfully, we, we don't look at, like, the people. We're looking at our, our healing bars and stuff, so I really don't know who's melee and who's DPS unless I... It's just too busy. It's like too busy trying to heal to figure out who's doing what. So I don't get that perspective. No, I definitely agree with the group. I, I think that's why I asked the question uh, to Lorelai because it was, you know, she's the one that's up there with the melee. And I play ranged and, and I, I'm, I'm going to have to say it's, it's probably partially uh, the fact that the raid leaders are all ranged. 
um, that we're not seeing the melee. So, you know, it's good to get a good melee perspective. But I think we were just so melee heavy that it's just like Joe Bowie said, they weren't getting it spread out enough to where when it got hit, you know, that's why we went over and demonstrated, but that was on the range side. We went and demonstrated, look, if you got three people stacked, that first person is getting hit with not only his, but the one behind him and the one behind them. And then the middle guy is getting hit by two, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that's, that's a lot of damage. And I noticed, and it was, you guys are correct. It was definitely the melees that were going down first, but I figured I just attested that to, there's a lot of melee. So, you know, the odds are it's going to be a melee that goes down over a range because there's, almost twice as much melee as there was range that night. I yeah. wonder if we could uh, troubleshooting, use more of the back of the room effectively for that. Especially if the melee don't have to run out. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. We're going to have to research that um, because I'm not quite sure what to do on that fight if we have more melee. You know, it's kind of like that one, uh, and help me out with the name, but he was the big ugly, you went inside his tummy and you had to kill people in there. Oh, yeah. Gorfiend. 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 Yeah. And if you had too many melee, we, we did that several times. We had too many melee. We just could not do it. Well, I think part of the problem, another thing that having, you know, a little bit of too many melee in, in that Tychondrius fight can produce is that's a, that's a very ad driven fight um, where, you know, if the ads don't go down fast enough, then then that's a lot of DPS that is not going towards the boss. And it really needs to get towards the boss. Um, and so basically, when, when we have a lot of melee, they're staying up near the boss uh, a lot, um, or it's harder for them to get to the ads because they have to run clear across the room uh, to get to them. That, you know, it's it makes it a little bit more difficult. I noticed when we were a little bit more range heavy on that fight in previous weeks, you know, the ads were dropping much cleaner and quicker um and it, it that could play into it a little bit as well and i'm not sure um you know it's possible another thing i was thinking about was it's it's possible that uh because we had said you know the melee needs to come help out with the ads that some of the infected were heading out there as well and possibly getting other players infected as at, at the same time you know by trying to help out with the ads and I don't know if we need to restrict it to, you know, healthy melee go out and help with the ads and, you know, uh, infected yeah, melee it should stay just there. Yeah, it should just be healthy ones. Right. That's what and I was thinking, too. You know but what? Go ahead. I, what, I, I just wasn't sure if that's what was part of what was happening because we were ending up with a lot of people infected uh, at towards the end of the phase, you know, more than we should. Um, and it, it, there's just all these little... Little things that, like you were saying, Lorelai, the mechanics and people making sure they do the mechanics and do them properly that make a huge difference in the overall outcome of the fight. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to pinpoint any one thing. I, I would say it, it was definitely an off night for the group, not a typical performance on stuff. I can't. I don't. I don't know if I can really sit back and blame the group. I, I. I honestly think it was group composition. When we, if we were to stop and look at it compared to when we got it down, we definitely had a lot more range. And I, you know, we have this saying among us. You know, blame the hunter, the hunter. <laughs> and I did, and I. I will admit this on air, live, sort of. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> that I switched up. And took away my barrage, and I went back to uh, Murder of Crows for single target. And the only reason I did that is because Dorden did it, and I was looking at his talents going, oh, that dirty dog, that's why he's beating me in DPS. He switched it to single target, so he gets his numbers up. So I did it, and then I don't think we had the uh, barrages that we normally do, so I'll take the blame. <laughs> yeah, you know, spreading that out on that particular fight is, is really helpful. Uh, and there's there's other things that can be done too to try and improve that. I I noticed you know you know as well as mechanics there was a little bit of a lag for some people like they uh, I I didn't see them performing at their at their top and I'm not going to name any names or anything like that but I you know there was parts of the fight where there was players that I saw that were just standing there and they they weren't casting spells or attacking things they were just standing there and I'm not sure why I don't know if they you know, we're having a lag spike or, or what, but um, 
there was a there was a few that that was that happened to be the case with. And yeah. So my, my impression was that DPS was also down from what we normally had. Yeah, my, I know mine was a little bit lower than normal, but I I think that was in part for for me personally at least because um, in the previous week I had done over 600k in that fight, almost almost 700k uh, on one of the polls I know. But this week I was more in the 500 range, and I, I attribute that in part to I made some changes to my tune to make it a little bit more single target. Um, but then on top of that, you know, when when the mechanics start going wrong and and things start happening, and I'm, you know, like paying attention to what's happening to other players as opposed to paying attention to, you know, my performance and my spells, uh, you know, it ends up affecting my personal DPS as well. Well, I think that's fair. I think that's part of what being off was. That we're all just a little bit off and a little of this and a little of that and the whole team effort's uh, not as amazing as it often is. Yeah. <laughs> and it could be, too, that maybe we need to, you know, we have a hard time like that. Have everybody take five minutes and watch the, uh, you know, go to YouTube and maybe watch the fight because we had some people that hadn't done it before um, and it might help with, you know, learning the mechanics and stuff. Absolutely. That brings up a good point. Joe Bowie, give us our rundown on our great websites that we like to watch from. Well, one of the one of my favorites these days is Line of Sight Gaming, uh, the Line of Sight Gaming channel on YouTube. These guys put together these short videos that are very informative uh, and generally give you all the necessary information without getting too deep into all the details. Uh, and when you want to dig down into those details, one of my favorite places to go would be Wowhead. Uh, Wowhead has boss strategy guides for pretty much uh, every boss that I can think of. And they give you detailed rundowns of all the spells, what they do, when when they happen, where you should be. And, and while the, those strategies may differ slightly from the line of sight strategies, um, it, it can give you some added perspective on what's going on in the fight. Uh, of course, your individual strategies for your raid group might vary slightly, but it's those are some great resources for some good information on learning the fights. How about you, Lorelai? You got a favorite? Uh, I like the line of sight. It's, it's a simplified version, which makes it easy if you want to get to it quickly and uh, see what some, uh, visually, what to do. You're, you don't see a group running around and killing things. I do look at Fat Boss just to see it in action because for me, I'm a visual learner. I, I need to see it being done first so that I can understand what to do. Okay. Epistle, where do you go for all your tanking expertise? <laughs> I feel like we're stealing from my tanking minute because really, <laughs> and, and, that, and that's fine. <laughs> Because what we're, what I wanted to talk about there was the difference between a kind of a top-down view, like a bird's eye view of a fight, which I think is line of sight, um, and a three-dimensional view, which is more what you get with something like Fat Boss. So I think both have their place, and it's I like to first get the top-down uh, from line of sight so I can get a sense of what's the play space, what's the arena, what's the alignment, where should people be positioned. But then I like to, to view the sort of the three-dimensional uh, sort of thing that you'd see on Fat Boss or other videos where, you know, well, what's that going to look like from my perspective and from my uh, gaming window? You know, from uh, kind of speaking on that subject and, and how you worded that, that's, that's a great way of looking at it. And one of the reasons why I think I like line of sight so much is that I am often uh, the one who ends up describing the fights to the players. And so getting that general overview uh, that line of sight provides that's you know not too specific really helps me um, try and figure out what's the most essential information that I need to pass on to the players in the raid uh, to, to try and get us used to the fights. Um, so I think that's where a lot of that comes in, uh, why I like that one so much. So do you guys see how I did that? I went from doing all the descriptions and talking about the whole fight to slowly turning it over to Joe Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I really appreciate it. Trust me. I do. Cause there's, you know, I don't know if people understand how, how difficult it is to be a raid leader to uh, put together a group. And I want to just say on, on Friday, we hit our maximum limit on raid personnel 
that could join and we still had one wanting to come in so that's that tells you about our raid group right there guys give yourself a quick good hand yeah that's great yeah of course that, right. that also means that the boss had a lot more health and everything yeah, did. No, right but, yeah but we you walked know, through it but we yeah, did we, we still handled it really really well even with even with a, a abrupt accidental pull on spellblade uh, it was still handled greatly. Uh, we we pulled it together. You know, we didn't have time to give any explanation on that. It was just you know feet to the fire, and everybody pulled together and handled it really really well. Yeah. Yep. Go to X. Go to Star. Go here. <laughs> after yeah, the tanks figured there. out where they're after the tanks figured out where we're going to stand this time because it was not anywhere near what we've done before. <laughs> sure, but you know the 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 great part about that was, you know, seeing the adaptation. And uh, how we started calling audibles on the fly uh, to help people, you know, uh, deal with the fact that we were not fighting it where we normally did. We did yeah. not have everything set up. And like I said, everybody handled it great. It uh, it went really smooth, actually. It wasn't even it wasn't even a close thing. I mean, we just downed the boss almost like normal. Well, and, and there this... were so many ads around too that we yeah. managed not to pull to pull in, which could have uh, been serious. Well, and I, I've got. Do you things really that I've been thinking about since then is that we're we're kind of at this point now where should we start to say we've got X number of melee and X number of DPS uh, range DPS spots because um, we haven't had to do that and and what happens when you get that many people and you have to say no we haven't been in that sort of dilemma at least not recently and yeah. also the other piece that connects to that too is there was a little more concern about the chatter that we were having um, in Teamspeak uh, the feeling of the kind of casual nature that we've been able to do, uh, there's times we have to be able to put that aside to really focus, you know, and get uh, get our heads totally in the game. So we're that's kind of growing pains I think we're experiencing about how we're going to handle some of those transitions. Open yeah. raid. You know, it's a it's a tough position to be in too because you know we want to be inclusive to everyone, but raid composition is really important, especially as we reach the end game bosses, um, and. You know, it's it sucks to tell people no because you want to like have people come along, and if if it's gonna mess up the raid composition, you know, yeah, that's not a position that I envy. And I'll leave all that to Fafford. Ah, uh, well, I can handle it. <laughs> well, that just shows you how important it is for people to sign up through Open Raid. It would make managing the raid a lot, I would think, you know, a little simplified a little bit for you. Well, yes and no, because it doesn't specify, it does, because I can actually then pick who I want and who I don't want, but it doesn't specify whether they're ranged or melee DPS, I have to know that by looking at what they are, you know. Oh, that's Yeah, good. they're spec, yeah. that's, yeah, right. they're spec and stuff. Yeah. That would be nice well, you might have... to put that on. Yeah, it would be nice. I can't even get them to change the the level from 100 to 110 for our 110 fights. Yeah. <laughs> really? You should be Still. able to do that yourself, I would think. No, you put but in you can, one, huh? You, no, you put in 110 because they haven't changed it on their website. You put in 110 and it says, you have to go lower than 101. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the new expansion lets you go to 110. We can't even do these raids unless you're 110. Wow. That's a that's a yeah. problem. Well, you know, like I said in the past, they got Zerg bottom out, and I don't know that they're actually putting as much effort into keeping open raid website going you know it's going because people are using it but uh, you know it's a great tool but they just i don't know i i don't know what the deal is but i've i've talked to him several times i actually had a really nice conversation going with one tech and and he goes well let me outsource that because we don't actually do that here and i'm like wow i'm talking to somebody that doesn't actually have access to the site to do anything about it. Wow. <laughs> wow. So well, you know, maybe, maybe we should uh, my, mobilize uh, our, 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 our audience here to uh, get out there and if they use open raid, send little letters to the developers. Yeah. I mean, it's a simple thing. I mean, it's, I, I can't imagine, you know, I, I know several website programmers and I've, I've used the boxes, the drop down boxes before. It's just a matter of putting your parameters in there, but I yep. don't, I don't get it. I wonder if, I wonder if some of the pullback from Open Raid is in relation to the fact that Blizzard has made so many strides in 
making it easier for people to find raids in the game. You know, with the with the group finder that's available uh, for finding dungeons and raids and world content and quests and all that sort of stuff, they're trying to integrate that into into WoW itself. I, I wonder if maybe that's why they're not putting so much importance on keeping open raid as up to date as they should. It, it's entirely possible, but for me, you know, for the way I use it, um, it's a recruiting tool. You know, it's to get enough players to join our group because, you know, how else do you find good players other than, okay, well, let's pull in a bunch of pugs and if there's a good one, we'll go ahead and, and ask him to join us every week. But it never happens that way. I mean, I've found a few people, but it's mainly been like, and you guys can attest to this, especially Tappuccino, because she was one that was brought in by somebody else. Yep. And now she's a regular raid member, you know. Um, the rest of us have been raiding a long time together, but with her and, and, and Faye has brought in quite a few of her friends and they're wanting to stay with us, you know, and that just brings me, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I'll, because it brings me to where I want to go next with our podcast. Okay. Um, well, we have, uh, we have put up a, uh, Facebook page as, as well, you know, and that's just brand new to us. Um, it's at uh, facebook.com forward slash lions pride tavern. Um, but, uh, we had a, uh, a fan get a hold of us and his name's Arkan shadow and, uh, our, our con shadow, I guess, Arkan shadow, however he wants to pronounce it. He's a night elf havoc demon hunter. And he has been listening to our podcast from the very beginning. And I, I don't know about level or about episode one from then on. And I don't know how he found us hopefully by one of our means of iTunes and, and Google play or podomatic.com. But, uh, his guild fell apart right before Mists of Pandaria. And as, as a lot of guilds do, you know, and back then when Blizzard was doing it, uh, that was about the only way you could raid, you know, was you had to be in a raiding guild. Now with the way Blizzard has changed it all, um, you know, you can do the searches for it. But, and I've heard this time and time again, their guilds fall apart and they can't do anything. And we have a couple of people that have joined us here um, Faye is one of them and, uh, sixes is the other and their guild fell apart. They're the only ones left in their guild. Yeah. And we're, we, we keep convincing them or trying to convince them to come over. You know, we don't have to have a guild, but you know, come over to our guild. If your guild fell apart and you feel lonely, you know, come to our guild. Well, his guild fell apart in Mr. Pandaria. And he started listening to us from this beginning. And he says, we remind him of his guild and the way it used to be. So I just thought that was so cool. So I got a hold of him. And one of the things, and I want to quote this exactly the way he wrote it, your group gets me through some hard days. When Aww. I'm on the ambulance transporting a patient, mm -hmm. and when I get back, he can escape a bit. He says, I can escape a bit for listening to you talking about your week. That's oh awesome. my that's, goodness. Yeah, that's yes. really great to hear. Yes. No, I was saying it is, it is really good to hear. And I think... I think there's so many people, um, even that I've known, who've had a similar experience like that, where they've actually really been emotionally invested in the game and in the the teams or the groups they've worked with. And to have uh, to have that lost is significant. It is traumatic and it's difficult. I, I don't know that people really talk that much about it or identify it, but it's um, it's a real loss. It is. Yeah. And it's you know, easy to get lonely in a crowded room, too. Yeah. Very yeah. True. Very true. And what's, what's unique about this group, I really think, and I think that's why we're getting, by the way, almost 2,200 listeners now. Yay! What a great audience. I think what's really unique about this group is that, you know, my wife and I kind of plan everything. My son is the main tank, and he tanks with a pistol. Um, you know, we've actually drove up to Canada and met a pistol. Um, and his family and, and Bronze Beer and, and uh, Worgen. And we also actually met uh, Donna Bell and Chugal. So, you know, in person, in real life. And that helps because brought, I think I, I, I can say this with all honesty, it brought all of us together. Um, but Very because true. of our composition, it is tough to be a raid leader and an organizer. 
but we have taken bits and pieces of responsibility. Um, my wife does a lot of the, when we're in game and we need to uh, change group compositions in certain groups. So we set up three distinct groups. She's the one doing that in the background for me. And it's not me, you know, I mean, I tried to at the very beginning when we first formed this raid group, I tried to do it all. And I finally went to my wife and my son. I said, look, I can't do this. I, it's, it's too much. You know, I got to be on an hour before the raid starts just to make sure if we even have enough people to raid with. And it was driving me bananas. And that's when I found open raid and that helped, you know, but, uh, for the most part, I mean, we've all come together like a glove in, in without anybody actually trying to organize it. It just fell into place. And I think that's what really makes our raid group fantastic. And so I went one step further for this guy and I invited him to our raid and he came back and he said, I would be happy and just enthralled to come raid with you guys. He's actually going, his next payday, he's going to move his tune to our server and join our, our, our yep, our, uh, nice. our guild. So, yeah. So he'll be a regular member, Archon Shadow. So we're going to have, I told him, I said, do you mind if I mention you on the, on the podcast? So I guarantee you, Archon Shadow, you're out there. I guarantee you, you're listening tonight. Grand yeah, can't guess. wait to meet cool. you. He did say y'all. <laughs> listening to y'all talking about your week so so not a canadian <laughs> no <laughs> he didn't say more from my part of country hey, if, if, if uh -huh. i can skip my oz he can skip whatever he wants that's right absolutely <laughs> uh, oh you met Faye great. too remember that yeah yeah well i did i i met Faye and i met uh niobe and uh, yeah she Amiya. whispered me yep. she whispered yeah. me um when after you guys met and she says they're just like in the game <laughs> <laughs> that's great well, and there's plans for uh for us yeah, to meet this coming absolutely summer. yeah joe Bowie, it, we're it's get true together. i can say faffer dresses exactly in game like he does in real life <laughs> <laughs> is he as short too uh no actually <laughs> That's a very clear no. <laughs> I do have the horns on my helmet head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was talking to Donna Bell during the raid when we took our break and I said, you know, one of the things you could do is, is re redraw me now that I have my complete set and she she whispers back and go, Your helmet doesn't match. <laughs> <laughs> I like but I like my helmet. It's got big horns on it. And I'm such a short little dwarf. <laughs> Uh, so too funny. So Ark and Shadow, welcome to the group. Um, I'm going to announce this on air because I'm going to hit you blindside with it, but we would like to get you on the podcast as our special guest so we can learn a little bit more about you. So if, uh, if that's something you want to do, you know how to get a hold of me, get a hold of me and we'll set it up for, uh, our next, uh, podcast recording time. All right, guys. Um, Anything more on this weekend's raid? I mean, I I think we did very well. Um, I think we just had a little bit of twisty turny there at the end, and I think it was just a lot of little things. But that's how much just having little things change that can that can cause us to go from yeah we're invincible to going to oh crap what the heck just happened? <laughs> yeah, we'll get and it. I know, yeah. And we, and we will, and we will get it. I mean, and technically, that is our progression boss. Because right. we've never been past him. We've got him down, but we never went past him. So um, I'm not too worried about it. So for your for the raid uh, members that are listening, we will get it. I guarantee it. it we're going to bounce back. Um, but... Uh, I think sometimes it's actually, you know, it can be good to have a rough night every now and again because I, I think it mm -hmm. helps players refocus a little bit when they get a little lax on things and they go, wow, we, did, we just didn't do as well as we would like on that night or as well as we thought we would. And and then and they, they work a little extra hard coming into the next week, I think. Yeah, it kind of gives you some humility, you know, to say, oh, I really got to make sure I do my best. Yeah, well, and, and you know, what was funny is I, I listened to all of us and we reiterated all the things that we've talked about on the podcast. Now, you guys got to make sure that when you're coming in that you're, you know, you got your flasks and, and the food and your enchants. 
Get yep. all your gems. <laughs> so bring I your a makes, game. <laughs> I think it makes us better raid leaders too, because you know we're uh, we're reinforcing what we talk about on the podcast instead of doing just the opposite. Well, that tattletale you have uh, that comes up is great because it just it's po- you know points to people who may not have that. Say, well, hey, and you're it, gonna get I, that. I, have we ever talked about that as an add-on? We have not. Ooh, yeah. Well, we call it tattletale. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not to, and it's not to like make fun of anybody or or get mad at them. It's just a hey, you know, it could be a reminder that you haven't eaten yeah. your food. Yeah, yeah. A, take your flask. Yep, there's don't a, fe- a feast right here. Yep, don't get your flask. Yeah, it gives us a tool to be able to, you know, figure that out without having to play guesswork and uh, let people know, which is handy. Because I mean, I've forgotten to eat food, forgotten to take a flask. Yeah, yep. same. happens to the best of us. Yep. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely have. And if somebody doesn't have something, we try to provide it if we can. But you know, some things we're not going to be able to do with cross servers, and yeah. people should you know try to be prepared. But you know, if you happen to forget your flasks in your bag or or in your bank or whatever, um, well, we do do the cauldron, so we have the cauldron. We do. So for everybody listening, if you want to know what the name of it is. It's actually a group of raid leader tools. It's called Exorcist Raid Tools. Um, that's E X O R S U S, Exorcist Raid Tools. Um, I w- it was given to me by another raid leader that I used to raid on a uh, real uh, high end guild. That they, you know, if you step to the left, <laughs> as I so happen to, and pull the boss. You wouldn't get invited back. I mean, it was just, it, they were that tough. But wow. he was telling me about it. Well, I mean, that's the way he raids. It's not yeah, the way yeah. I raid. Yep. You know? But uh, he was telling me about it, how great it is and how it tells you all the things. Because I can actually go to it. And I can see who has enchants, who doesn't. It it actually uh, inspects every single player within my range. So if I'm standing in the middle of the group, I can look and see what everybody's wearing and in a in a glance. You know, I can I can go, let's look at helmets and I can just highlight that and all the helmets come up and you know, um but the tattletale is part of it. Uh it also tells me, it whispers me uh exactly who pulled, you know, so I know Ooh. who did it. Yep. Um I don't like sharing those because I, I don't think, and we've talked about this numerous times, it doesn't help the raid group at all if you're pointing fingers. Right. You know, I know other groups love to do it because it's easy to do and it's human nature to say, oh, it wasn't me, it was somebody else. You know, it doesn't make any difference. You know, let's just continue on, move on. Now, if the same guy's doing it over and over and over and over and over, yes then I will say something and I don't have a problem with that. Like Joe Bowie pointed out, you know, he's going to leave that to Fafford. I don't have a problem doing it, but we don't have an issue with that too much. Um, I've had to talk to just a couple people, but it was just, you know, Hey, just don't do this. Don't do that. If you would, cause it just kind of confuses things. And they're like, sure. Yeah, no problem. Didn't mean to overstep, you know, and that's the beauty of our group. Let's say we, I know, Epistle's been uh, trying to come up with unique ways of making gold, and I think he tasked his kids at helping him. So, uh, making gold, Epistle? Oh, yeah. I just We talked about this recently, and so I was keeping my ear out for money-making techniques. And it turns out that uh, Bronzebeard was telling me that he's taking to standing on the street corners in Dalran selling herbs. I, I hope this has no connection with any kind of future career for him. But, <laughs> but what he's well, figured isn't out... That, isn't that legal in, in uh, Colorado now? Or Colorado? Well, it, it, Canada? Yeah, Canada, Colorado, what's the... Mm-hmm. Okay, so anyways, well, not, not touching that one. Um, <laughs> all the Canadian viewers, angry emails. Um, <laughs> so what will <laughs> what he's been doing, though, he'll just go, he'll buy several stacks of herbs and then come back out and you know call them out and of course I've been in this situation even as a mage where if somebody was just right there selling it to me cheap uh, ish but maybe a little more expensive than the auction house and I just need 10 uh, I might sell it so apparently he's been spending several hours of his time this weekend rather than you know studying for exams um, <laughs> selling herbs <laughs> on street corners and apparently doing fairly well for himself 
That's amazing. Uh, so after this podcast, we're going to see people on the street corners now selling. We're all going to yeah. be out there in jail. He's going to be like, bad. He's going to be mad. It's like, why did you have to tell him? That was my gig. They're all cutting into my uh, yeah profit margins. Well, there's lots of servers, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's true, and he and he recently changed servers, so he's not on uh, some of ours, anyways. Wow, that's amazing. I, I I would not think that would happen, but you know, you think about it. He's got a market there because there is no um, auction house in Dalaran. Correct. Correct. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That. So he's creating his own auction house. That's that's that's. That's thinking. He's going to go somewhere. He may be president someday. Except the whole being born in the... Never mind. <laughs> prime minister? You know, maybe. There you That'd go. Prime minister. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's, let's talk about a couple of things that we found to be new or we didn't know about in WoW today. Joe Bowie, you got one? Yeah. Uh, this week, I learned that if you beat Gul'dan... Even in LFR, uh, you can complete the quest with Khadgar after the fight, and then if you return to Shalaran and Suramar and talk to Oculith, uh, he'll give you a quest and teleport you to the Nighthold. Uh, not the raid instance, but a separate instance, where you will see a little bit of stuff happen there, and then you will get your very own Arcanist's Mana Saber mount, which is a very pretty mount. Ooh, cool. Yeah. So if, if those of you who have been interested in getting that mount, I, I know I saw a lot of people get it who had completed it on normal uh, or heroic. Um, and, uh, and I was like, oh, well, that's a cool mount that, you know, we'll get eventually. And I was surprised to see that you could complete the quest uh, even in LFR, which is pretty handy. I actually, I did, did that in LFR and... I didn't realize that you have to turn the quest in before you leave the dungeon or the raid. So I ended up just leaving the party and getting out of the dungeon. I still have the quest I haven't turned in yet. But you can go back in and, you know, you have to kill him again, though, and, and then turn it in. Yeah. So don't that, forget to not leave until you turn it in. Yeah, that, that happened to me as well. Uh, I was actually, I was queued up for multiple LFRs and... Um, you know, my queue popped up right at the end of the Gul'dan fight, so I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll head to the next one." And <laughs> yeah. then I, and then after I got done with my LFRs, I was like, "Where do I turn?" It? Oh man! And then I had to go kill Gul'dan again in order to turn in that quest. Oh, I actually found an accidental fix for that because uh, I'd had the same thing at the beginning of our raid on Saturday. People had talked about getting it, so I was like, "Huh? Oh, why don't I just talk to the person who's going to?" Let me turn it in. I did, and he teleported me to it, and I handed it in while in raid. So I got it at the start of our raid. Hmm. Oh, you mean... That's interesting. Who did you talk to? Oh, uh, you have to talk to the guy in Suramar who does the teleportation. If the you talk Oculus. to Oculus before yep. you turn it in Khadgar's quest, he'll send you to Khadgar again? Uh, I don't know the exact sequencing, but I just know I'd only done one step towards the quest. Uh, like I turned a quest in, but then hadn't done the next thing where you have to talk to him and he teleports you. But I was able to do that at the beginning of our raid, even though we hadn't cleared the boss. Interesting. Who typed up the portal to Dalaran? Oh, I did. Yeah, I was just running down the road past Stone Stonehoof uh, Watch and saw something glimmery off to the side. And I went back off the road. It's off the side of the mountain to the left side. And there's a couple of mages there with a portal up there. And it's just a portal to Dalaran. So I'm not sure. I've never seen any portal anywhere else in any of the zones and hadn't really paid attention to whether or not it's been there before, but it's there. Well, now I know I've got a portal to Dalaran in my hunter's lodge. This is just outside. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm over here right now. I'm going to take this one tune over there and see if it's still there. Okay. Now, has um, anybody ever noticed that outside of Stormwind... Up the mountain to the left of the entrance gate, there's what looks like another flight path that might be created. Hmm. Outside of Stormwind? Yeah. It was up a mountain. There was a, an eagle sitting in one of the flight path nests. And oh. yeah. I, I went there. It had, nothing had happened, but I haven't been up there since to see if they've 
put a flight path up there for some reason, or if that's something that's going to be created later. Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's like this looks almost like a portal. Or it could no. be like a portal being started. I think there's a, a tent up there, but I know there was a bird. Is it up I... past uh, Mage Towers? Yes. Up, up the yeah, hill? it's up yeah. past the outside of the gate. That's been there that's... for a while. Yeah, that's. I think that's part of, um, if I recall correctly, and I, and I could be wrong about this, but I've been there and, and had a quest that took me there, and I think it pertains to... One of the old mage legendary quests of some sort, oh. uh, if I remember correctly, and I could be remembering wrong, but uh, like the uh, what is it, the Nordrassel stuff, um, you know, like getting getting your legendary staff way back when. Yeah. Um, I think it had something to do with that, but I could be remembering incorrectly on that. Well, it has been there for a long time, so. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, a couple of expansions. Yeah, but I know I've been. I I know I got sent to that position for a quest at some point, um, and had to do something there, and then went somewhere else. But uh, I I think it was part of my mage part of a mage quest uh, a long time ago. But it it might have been a different quest entirely. Tappuccino, do you have anything that uh, tip or trick or uh, something you found out? Um, it's not something I found out, but it's something I've um, noticed that other people may not know, and that is in your guild tab, if you're in a guild and you're looking to see who can make potions or leather or armor or um, is a miner or whomever, if you go to your guild tab and click on your roster and up where it says view, Go to professions and then click on show offline members and it will give you everybody's professions that is in your guild and what level they're at. You can see what they can make. So pretty handy tool if you're, you know, looking for someone that, you know, maybe you need them to make you something um, or you want to give them some mats, for instance. You can just look in there and you'll see everybody that's in the guild. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. There could be people out there that have just starting out in WoW that would like to know. So, Lorelai, I, I have a, a specific fan ask question for you. I almost forgot completely about it. So, one of our up and coming raid members, she's only, uh, I think she's in her 60s maybe now. Mm -hmm. uh, she started a couple weeks ago. Um, she has, I want to say, 350 or 375 mounts. And she wow. wants to know how many you have. Oh, my goodness. Oh, let me go to the thing here and see. <laughs> Let, let's see. I have, oh, she's, I can't see. That's a two, 221. Oh, well, wow. I told her that you had her beat. beat. No, <laughs> I really Maybe haven't. Pets. I don't collect mounts as much as I do the pets. Oh, I'm jealous. My gosh, I love I am mounts. so sorry. I, I am talking about pets, not mounts. Oh, sorry. Pets. All right. Yes, I, I said another, mounts. Another I'm sorry. Uh, total 725. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had her beaten. Yes. <laughs> she she says she's a pet um, wench. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we'll have some good Two. talks then. Yes. Yes. So uh, okay, I will. I, but I wasn't quite sure how many you had, and I told her I would ask you. <laughs> Oh, I did find this portal, and it's actually when you leave, when you go down that road and you get into Stormheim, there is a portal here with a couple of Kirin Tor mages. <laughs> and it takes you to Dalaran. Yeah, let's go through and see what happens. Could be and, old Dalaran. <laughs> and which part of Storm of Stormheim? Uh, it's just it's just over the border from uh, uh, High Mountain Surma? into oh, from Heimar. Stormheim. Oh, from Okay. Oh yeah, it's 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 a portal to Dalaran. Takes you near, right down the white path. That is so weird. Near is that near like the I think it's called the the Weeping Bluffs or the Black Beak Overlook somewhere around there? Uh, I'm not sure I didn't go that far over. It was just I followed the road from Stonehoof flight path. There's a on the left there's a set of uh, rock stairs and you can see it right from the road. Oh, okay. Interesting. That'll be useful for my tunes who can't teleport. Yeah, it's like, oh, look, free ride home. All right, so we're going to go next. Uh, I'm sorry, Epistle, did you have anything you wanted to add? 
Uh, one small thing. Sure. I've been doing the fishing series of quests, trying to get my artifact uh, fishing pole. So I've been working on the bigger fish to fry quest. And at one point, when you're looking for fish, you can get this one thing, which is a message in a bottle from uh, Nat Pagel. The problem with that is that, uh, and I've done this a couple times and not realized why, if you right-click on the bottle to open it, it's supposed to give you a lure. But I've been having problems with it. I did a little research today, and it turns out that if you already have one in your bag and didn't notice, which in my case I did, it was an Axel fish lure, um, it'll give you an error message. It'll, it'll look really weird. It'll give a pop-up like item not found or some such strange thing. Um, and I'm not used to seeing that kind of strange error message in WoW, but it's, a, I guess, a known issue. And double-check your bag. You probably already got one. I didn't know you could buy that from Nat Pagel, and here I went, I fished for like an hour, I've tried to fish it up. Oh, the bottle is a drop. The bottle is oh, okay, it, it gets the, I a drop. The drop. Yeah. I see. But if you opened it and didn't realize you had, then you're kind of hooped. All right, cue the music. It's time for Lorelei's Pet Battle Minute. Pet battlers. Today, I'm just going to talk very briefly about some tips to use to help you get your pets leveled up quickly. And one thing you need is your safari hat, which you can get from defeating 40 pet master tamers. Um, that will give you 10% experience every time you try to level a pet. So make sure you have it on. Uh, always Try to do some leveling during the pet battle bonus event. That'll give you 200% increased experience. And then take some pet treats along with you, and they're sold by different suppliers, and they will also give you experience that will stack all together. So you can level a pet uh, from about level 5 to 25 in less than an hour. And some good places to still level pets are Pandaria. Um, once you have flying, you can go very quickly all around Pandaria and hit every pet tamer. And most of those teams allow you to stick in a leveling pet so you can level a pet one go around sometimes. Uh, I thought today what I'd do is I'd give you a list of, um, talk about one of the World Quest tamers in Dalaran that... Uh, you can use and the teams that you, will help you defeat that boss. And this week has been Sir Galveston. And I use the Unborn Valkyr, the Nexus Whelpling, and the Nordrasil Wisp. And uh, I think what I can do is if people would like, I could put that maybe up on the Facebook page, what attacks to use, because it's a little bit too much to talk about. But those are three pets that are really good to take him down. And that's your pet tips for the week. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll look forward to seeing that on the uh, Facebook page. So, Joe Bowie switched from the Transmog Minute to Getting Deeps with Joe Bowie. So, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, getting deeps by talking about timing. Uh, many raid fights in World of Warcraft have moments when high bursts of DPS is essential to burning a phase of a fight or just to make sure certain adds get down quickly. One thing you can do as a DPS to help this uh, is timing. When you use your cooldowns so you can really push the DPS out at the time when it's most needed. Uh, a good example of that might be in the Tychondrius fight in Nighthold, the one we had trouble with this week. And that fight has multiple phases. Most of the time, the first phase takes about two minutes to push into the second phase, which is the bat phase, or what that's what we like to call it. A few of my uh, mage cooldowns are about two minutes long. So a good plan for me is to use my cooldowns like combustion and mirror image right at the very beginning of the fight. And then as we enter into the bat phase, which is kind of an intermission phase between attacking the boss, uh, I, I can save those during the bat phase, and then I, during, that fit, during the bat phase, I pick up a buff that increases our damage, so when we come out of it, it allows us to do greater damage against the boss. So at that point, when we come out, I will pop my cooldowns immediately after coming out of the boss, because we're going to use heroism, and I'm going to use another potion, and things of that nature, and it can help increase my damage uh, quite a bit. Uh, by timing up when I'm going to use those cooldowns. Uh, there are many other fights where timing 
uh, when you use most of your powerful spells and abilities can be very helpful to your raid. Uh, it takes getting familiar with those fights before you'll learn when and where you need to use them to get your strongest abilities and spells out. But with a little practice, you'll be getting deeps right where you're needing them most. And if you have any questions about DPS or have uh, uh, any questions about improving your DPS, contact me at askjobui at gmail.com and I'll see what I can do about helping you out. Fantastic. Thanks, Jobui. All right, Epistle's coming at you tanking minute, even though we ruined it for him, but he's going to do it anyway. <laughs> it's all good. It's that much shorter. Yes, come at me. I discovered today, uh, as some of you, or this week, as some of you may have, that come at me is also a tell that is used by a giant sea scrog, who happens to be a world boss in um, um, north in High Mountain. So, great. I didn't make that connection. I am now thinking of myself as a giant sea scrog. Anyway, aside from that... <laughs> Okay. okay, so for today's uh, tanking minute, I want to talk about uh, the concept of looking over your shoulder as a tank. It's very easy to get what uh, we in our raid call tunnel vision. That's where you're just looking at the boss and nothing else, and you're so focused on one thing that you might be forgetting some other things. And the magic of WoW is not only do you have sort of this top-down look, you know, that we can see in something like a line of sight video. Uh, we've also got a sort of a three-dimensional world that we get to play in. It's part of the thing that makes the game so exciting and interesting. But if you're only kind of thinking about that top-down view and only looking at the boss, it's very easy to kind of lose um, awareness of your situation, or as we like to call it, situ situational awareness. So very important um, during a fight as a tank not to be so focused on the boss and only the boss that you lose track of what's around you. So, Tychondrius, this last week as an example, uh, there are several parts in the fight where I was tanking the boss and you'd think that's where all my attention would be, but because I have to switch um, really in a second from tanking the boss to running away from the boss and then picking up, as it happened for us, two or three ads at the same time, additional ads, um, I actually positioned 10 seconds before that, I moved my camera angle around to see where I was going to go and the ads I was going to pick up. And in actual fact, um, when you start to get good at that kind of technique, you can do a couple of other really fun things too as a tank. So what I'd already done, knowing I had the threat already on the boss, is I looked around, I picked up one of the first ads um, and taunted him uh, even before I had to abandon the boss. And then, because you can do that sort of behind you, you can you can yell at one mob behind you as a tank. And then I had another uh, area, a distance uh, technique I could use to pick up another mob and got it onto the second one. And then my last one I couldn't use until I t totally turned around. Um, but it was possible to do that because I, again, had the camera angle ready to go. So the minute I knew the Darg was taunting off me, I could charge out, throw my Avenger shield, which is my great pulling technique, and capture all those adds. And that way I could go from fighting a boss in one direction to grabbing three adds at the back of the room simultaneously. A little tricky, but once you kind of get used to that and you're used to moving your camera angle around and looking at uh, the fight differently, uh, you can start to think ahead how you're going to be pulling these mobs that are appearing, fortunately, in a more or less uh, predictable pattern. And if you don't know how to change the camera angle, it's fairly simple. Just your left uh, mouse button on the screen, move left, right, up, down, and you'll get to see how uh, how magically you can be looking over your shoulder. And that's my tanking minute. Awesome. Good advice. Yeah. Big, 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 good stuff. Good, big stuff. Something like that. Anyway, Tapachino, tap into the healing minute. Okay, for my tap into the healing minute, I'd like to talk about healing circles and other AOE visual effects that you might see from healers. Um, when we're in a raid, and a lot of times you might see something on the ground, and you're always told, you know, don't step in stuff, get out of, you know, don't step in anything. Well, if you have GTFO as an add-on, which we highly recommend, um, you'll know by the loud noise it makes to, you know, get the heck off the spot. But just to make it easier to for you to recognize what healing circles might look like, I've got a kind of a rundown, and I'm just talking about these visual effects, not um, anything else with healing tonight. Um, the druid, my, my spec, has what's called 
efflorescence. It's the green circle that you see with the, you know, pretty flowers coming out of it. You know, you want to stand in that. Monk has one called Vivify, which looks like a green mist, um, which is a healing mist. So those are okay. You see that? You got a monk in there? Go ahead and stand in that mist. Resto Shamans have Healing Rain. It's probably one of the few healing um, um, healing spells that actually fall from you know the sky and onto the ground. But that's a pretty much like a big blue circle of rain. So by all means, get into that. The Holy Paladin has what's called the Light of Dawn. The Disc Priest has Power Word Barrier, which is a big golden globe-like spell. It's it, it's a major healing spell, and if you see that, you know, go in and, and get some healing. There are some other bosses that have big globe-like things that are you're not supposed to stand in, but the healing, the, the Disc Priest, rather, is a big golden, and it's pretty, and, you know, you just want to go into the light. And then the Holy Priest has basically their, their spells. They don't have, like, a big AoE effect on the ground spells, but they do have, like... All theirs are bright and golden lights on the target, so those are nice to have. And then in this uh, in Legion, there's a new trinket called the Perfectly Preserved Cake, and what it will do is a healer can put it down on the ground, and it will stay for 20 seconds, and up to five allies who click on this can um, absorb over 600,000 damage for 12 seconds. So if you're a healer and you have that trinket, you know you you might want to. When there's going to be some high damage, you know, put it down and tell people, hey, I put the cake down so that, you know, five DPS around that can and grab a bite and, you know, get protected. Um, it only lasts for 20 seconds, so I do suggest that, you know, you put out a, a warning to the raid that you're putting it down so it doesn't get wasted. I believe it's got like a two-minute cooldown, cool so, you know, you can put it down quite often. And that is my healing minute, and I will have to get back to you on the Holy Paladin. <laughs> Not a problem there at all. We can talk about that next week. Tab, that was fantastic information. Thank you very much. Thank so, you. So, uh, that, 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 it's WFN News, Warcraft Fafford News. So, the Unguro Madness starts this Friday, the 17th, and ends on Monday, the 20th. So, don't miss it. Dark Moon Fair ended. Yay. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> oh, love it. And this is your last call for the Flame Saber mount. If you haven't gotten it, Tuesday, the day after this airs, it's going away. Get your 15 uh, team. Oh, they're not even kills. They're just, uh, you got to participate. 15 team participations to get your mount, the Flame Saber mount. So I want to personally thank. Ark and Shadow, for letting us know exactly why we do this podcast. Thank you very much. Thank we'll you. Be... Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, and thanks. we will be looking forward to seeing you in our raid. So don't don't let us down. Join us up. Everybody, thanks for coming. It's been fantastic. Yeah, see everybody Thank next you, everybody. Weekend. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you, listeners. If you like this podcast, throw us a like and subscribe to our channel. And please, leave comments or questions below. Maybe we'll answer them on the air next podcast. We are hosted on Potomatic.com. Our website is lionspridetavern.potomatic.com. Our podcast also airs on iTunes for Apple users, Google Play for Androids, and YouTube. Just search World of Warcraft Lions Pride Tavern Podcast. See you next week, and thanks for listening.